In the last video, we talked about just how important it is for a company to generate a return on invested capital that's in excess of their cost of capital. And this chart from IATA is a great illustration of that relationship for the airline industry over the past 20 years. So take a look at this. Here, this line here is the return, and this line here is the weighted average cost of capital. So for the entire 20 year period, the industry as a whole has generated a return that's less than its cost of capital. So for 20 years, the industry has been destroying value. And you can also see how, just how volatile this industry is. You know, back here in the mid to late 90s, the economy was doing well. Then we headed into a recession, and the returns started declining. Uh, the 9-11 uh, attack hit, and the returns went, gee, almost to zero. In the early 2000s, the industry started clawing its way back. Then the financial crisis hit, and returns dropped again. And it's only been in these past few years that returns are starting to approach where they were 20 years ago and the cost of capital has come down a bit. So, you know, the other thing this illustrates is just how risky this industry is. The There are so many external factors that impact returns, but when your inter returns drop off, your costs stay right where they were. So uh, this this relationship is hard to predict, predict, right? Because even when you're improving your returns, something can happen to take those returns away from you. So, you know, if you were an investor, you would think this is just a horrible place to put your money. The encouraging thing, though, is that this gap is narrowing, and it's taken 20 years, but the industry has gotten, you know, a little bit of the cost of capital down. So, uh, and also, you know, there's a lot of airlines in here, and there's certainly examples of airlines that are managing this gap better, and certainly airlines that are uh, exceeding their cost of capital. And if this trend continues, uh, it will be good for the entire industry. So there's definitely good investments within this, uh, even if you take the industry as a whole, has been uh, rather dismal. There's a couple other charts in this document, and you can you can download this document for from IATA. It's a free document, um, but a couple other charts that are really interesting. Let me go find them. So I thought this one was uh, interesting. It shows the ROIC for a selected number of industries over uh, what that time period, 1965 to 2007, and they're listed from highest ROIC to lowest. And you start out with the pharmaceuticals uh, earning a return somewhere, you know, above 20 percent. And then I think you can guess the punchline to get to the airline industry. You have to go all the way down to the bottom of the chart. And there we are just below electric utility. So, you know, an industry that doesn't generate uh, very good returns relative to other industries to begin with, uh, it just makes that challenge of uh, closing the gap between the returns and their cost of capital uh, that much more uh, uh, difficult. Uh, one more thing I want to show you while we're here. This chart demonstrates the challenges that come with certain business models. So this is also ROIC compared to cost of capital, but it's for different regions and different business models. So you have four different geographies here and the returns for network carriers versus low-cost carriers. And you can see in each, in, uh, in each region, not so much in North America, but even in North America, the low-cost carriers generate a higher return than the network carriers. Yet their cost of capital doesn't vary very, very much by, by business model. So if you're an LCC, and you know by nature LCCs just don't take as much capital investment as network carriers do, then your returns are going to be higher, and you have a leg up on closing that gap. So you know your choice of business model will have a lot to do with um, uh, how you how you manage your returns and what you have to do to get there. So let's take a look at um, at least one airline's strategy for improving their return on invested capital. 
So we're back to our friend Southwest. This is their annual report from 2012. And in their annual report, they talk about their ROIC target. So they have a return on invested capital target of 15%. And I went and looked. They actually achieved the 7% um, ROIC uh, in in this year. Now this target is for the following year, so it doesn't mean they missed it, but um, they're, they're achieving, around this time, they're achieving about a 7% ROIC. They have a target of 15%. And then they lay out the, um, the things that they're going to do to get there. Um, let me pause a second. So in this section, they have laid out their strategy for achieving their goal. So the company's implemented several strategic initiatives intended to increase revenue, reduce costs, um, uh, to aid the company to uh, get to its goal of achieving those pre-tax uh, return on invested capital of 15%. So uh, they had recently bought uh, Airtran, their, uh, what are they doing, something with their loyalty program, their, um, uh, let's see, fleet fleet modernization and larger aircraft and new reservation system so uh, they have a strategy around getting to that return and I think one of the interesting things is this is this is uh, um, new language that you would find in in uh, airline annual reports uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't see this kind of language in airline annual reports back in uh, the mid 2000s, although you know Southwest is you know always the exception because they're uh, such a consistently financially fa financially healthy company. Uh, but you can you know whether you see this in annual reports or hear airlines talking on investor calls, they're all talking about ROIC and how they're in going to uh, improve it. I want to show you one example how an airline does its calculation of ROIC. Um, I haven't spent too much time on it because there's many ways to calculate it and actually varies by airline. Uh, the example I have here is from JetBlue Airways and they're nice enough to actually put on their website exactly how they calculate it so that analysts don't have to go and, and figure out. Um, now I, in the last video I said, well, let's see if I can find my pen here, uh, there it is, the uh, uh, ROIC equals uh, operating profit over uh, equity, which is debt plus, plus um, I'm sorry, uh, over capital, which is debt plus equity. So let's see how uh, JetBlue interprets that. Now, here's their operating income, and then they actually adjust it for taxes. And that's what I see most companies do. Some companies, some airlines will give you a pre-tax and an after-tax ROIC. But I think when you see these figures quoted without um, the notation of whether it's pre or after tax, it's generally after tax. Uh, then down here, they um, they have their average stockholders, equity, their debt, and as most airlines, they consider you know, capital leases a uh, part of debt. So they have their um, their operating profit over their total equity, and they get 4.8%. Uh, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. There's, um, you know, can be long, long discussions about what the right way, you know, what the right components of this calculation should be. But at the end of the day, the important thing for us is you do get some percentage, and then you can uh, assess whether that is in excess of their cost of capital. Now, while airlines are getting fairly forthcoming with their uh, ROIC figures, they don't speak much about their cost of capital. So I don't know what JetBlue's cost of capital is. I'm fairly certain it's above 4.8%. IATA has estimated that globally the cost of capital for the industry is somewhere between 7 to 9%. Now there's certainly you know, there's outliers below and above that range, um, but you can, I think it would be safe to say that an airline below 7% is probably not um, earning its cost of capital, and an airline, you know, well above, uh, 
uh, you know, 12 would be in a much better uh, situation. We saw that um, while Southwest set a target of 15%, they were earning 7%. So I don't know how that compares to their cost of capital, but they're much closer to the range. And just to give you a little bit more context, I went out to some an annual reports to look at other airlines. Delta is reporting in 2012 a 10.4% uh, ROIC. Uh, let's see, I have Alaska here was reporting 13%. And I have uh, Spirit, Save, was reporting uh, once again at the top of the list they had 16 percent and if you haven't figured out by now if you've look, watched all these videos and every time I refer to airlines um, Spirit is a superstar when it comes to um, managing their balance sheet their returns and their um, their costs so that's why they always you know appear at the at the top of all the metrics so that's all I'm going to say about ROIC and return on, excuse me and um, weighted average cost of capital you know this is um, I'm making this video in January of 2014 this is uh, you know this story is yet to be told uh, the uh, the returns of this industry have been so volatile over the past 20 years that it's going to be anybody's guess what it's going to do in the next 20 years so it'll be interesting